it is kind of shocking to me how many of the people that Jeezy spent all that time around he ended up falling out with and just basically they ended up not really having great things to say about him. Yeah, but see, my situation is different mm. from all theirs. Okay. Because my situation is not about no money. Mm -hmm. It's not about no contracts. It's not about no beats. It's not about no songs being written. It's not about no credits on no albums or nothing. This is all about him breaking his word and not keeping it 100 like we, like we, you know, the word I'm trying to get at. Like we all said together, like having a ritual. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Sitting around the round table and saying this is what it is. Right. And this is what we're going to do, and we ain't breaking the code. What yeah. specifically, though? Like, you, you mean just like him referring to you as his brother? Or like, what was it exactly that he didn't do that you felt like he was supposed to have done? I mean, just just keep it 100 with what you said. Like, you broke every word into everybody. Like, I was the last one there. You know what I'm saying? I was the last one there, and I left. And that's I left because one day we was in Miami, and see if anybody know anybody was around like when he had the ten year anniversary and all that I was still with him, but mm. I didn't go I didn't go to none of that because we was already at odds. Really, I was already calculating my steps to get the f on. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And it really wasn't that hard because I was, you know. But my loyalty was with him. You know what I'm saying? Like we did so much together, and and the. Sh that we did together, I thought that that shit was gonna be for life. Like loyalty was nothing. Right. When it when in my eyes to him now, because my shit, I wasn't there for the money. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't there for the money. Right. I was there for the loyalty and the love that I had for him, and that I had for the whole family, not just him. Like from all the making boys crew, from Univille, all my all the homies. Like rest in peace, Kingpin. Rest in peace, Pookie Loke. Mm. Like all like the like I learned a lot from being with them. Right. And, you know, they members. I'm not a member. But I learned a lot about brotherhood and having love for you for your brother for real. Right. And not crossing him out. Well, it's it yeah, it's kinda crazy because it feels like to him, maybe you were just useful to him in that moment. And like, you know, he's a celebrity and he's trying to get as far as he could possibly get in his career. But to you, when he's talking about brotherhood and loyalty and stuff like that, you took that very literally, you know? Yeah, because you got see these tattoos on me? Mm, like, yeah, you got CT all over the place, huh? All over the place, and we got these together. Mm. I didn't get these on my own, like, I'm going to go get these. No, me, me and him got these together. If you look on his arm, he got the same tattoo right here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, and when we did it, that was it. Like, if this is what we doing, this is what we doing. And it's to death do us, <laughs> it's to death do us part. That's what he. That's what he said. So that's my whole thing. <coughs> I'm just bringing to light and letting him remember that you said this shit for life. Mm. So I'm gonna make you remember this shit for life. Right. I ain't letting up, and I ain't looking for nothing. I don't want to sit down. I don't. Ain't, I don't want no money. Ain't nothing you can give me. Right. You already broke the code. Ain't no code no more. Right. That's but, how I look at so, it. So, but going back to the early days, like, how did you get close to him in the first place? Like, because you doing, like, the promotion well, had, stuff, you could have easily not got close to him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But real record, real recognized real, man. You know, that's all I can say about that. Like, he knew when he seen me and been around me, he knew I wasn't no flaw. He knew I wasn't no sucker. He knew I was just a, a real, uh, I was just a real could think for itself. Mm -hmm. That's why he put me in the position of Jeezy's little brother. You know what I'm saying? That's why he would send me to the bank with three, four hundred thousand and put in, or go pick up three, four hundred thousand and bring it to him, or carry a bag that got all this money in it, or have all this jewelry. Like I could, anytime I could have three hundred thousand in my car, I could have went back to my city. Mm. And you ain't about to come up there. A lot of people probably would have in that situation. That's, that's all I'm saying, but I wasn't there for that. Definitely. So, okay, but how do you actually become closer to him? Like once he, you start um, being around him, I had went back to I had went back to Indianapolis for a minute, and he had called me, and he was like, "Hey, I'm about to get this. I'm about to get this music shit. About to we about to we about to go with this music shit. We out of here." So when you first met him, he was still kind of trying to make it happen. Yeah, when I first met, they was they were still in the streets. Mm. Yeah, they were still in the streets. Yeah, because you people, gotta understand, BMF was still out. Right, but people always want to act like Jeezy was not like a real participant in being. But see, I'm, 
he 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 wasn't a participant because he was CTE. He wasn't BMF. Mm. He was Meech's friend. But CTE had their own street CTE. shit going at the time. It was like a separate thing. Yeah, if you watch that interview with um, BMF Bull, he said it. He said mm. Jeezy always had his CTE shit going on. Right. Because he did. That was him and Meech was just friends. You know what I'm saying? So even the narratives, they be talking about BMF pay for studio time. They pay for this. That's just lies. Mm -hmm. Like I would never... What I got going on with Jeezy is personal, and it's not about what he did before. Because what he did before, I know it's true. Mm -hmm. I know about the street shit. I seen it in my own eyes. I seen the money in my own eyes. Right. You know what I'm saying? He brought a million dollars. Him and Kinky B brought a million dollars in cash to the Thug Motivation 101 photo shoot. Mm. They money. Like, it wasn't... You know what I'm saying? But just in general, normally we expect like rival or like f drug crews in the same city to not necessarily get along. How did it end up being that BMF decided like, okay, we're going to make this guy kind of like our rapper that we're going to sort of stamp? They, they didn't. It was, I mean, he was, like I said, he was friends with Meech. Mm -hmm. So they was hanging out together. You know, he was... You know, y'all could put it together if you're friends with Meech and you in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Right. So They were doing business. At whatever the time, they right? was doing. Okay. I don't, you know, I don't know. Right. But I'm just saying, like, they didn't have to stamp him. Because mm. what's what meant to be is meant to be. You couldn't deny his music. Mm. They always talking about they stamped him. But what about, what, what, what happened What happened with Blue Da Vinci? Yeah. He got all the videos and all the money and all the cars. They stamping him hard. Right. Yeah. Like, Certain thing is meant to be. You couldn't deny Jeezy. So if you if Jeezy's part of your crew and you hear this music and he he's slapping in the club, that, that's good for everybody. Right. But it ain't like they were just going around paying for paying for um DJs to play the songs. When the DJ heard the shit, they had to play. Like this shit's crazy. Right. So when Rick Ross said like you're not a member, you're just an affiliate in that one song. Was mm -hmm. it was it Rick Ross who said it? Is that not really an accurate description of? how close he actually was to those guys? Shit. In my eyes, right now, what would you want to be? A affiliate? You right. I'm not well, a member. Once the Fed charges start coming I'm down, yeah, for sure. I'll be a Thank you, be Rick Ross. affiliate. Thank you, Rick Ross, for that song. <laughs> I don't want to, yeah, I'm an affiliate. Right. I just hang around. I ain't doing nothing. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Um, okay, but so, so you go back to Indianapolis, and then he starts calling you, wants you to come back out. What, he just needed somebody else solid to kind of be around, help, help keep the operation moving? Um, you know, when he called, he just said, I fuck with you. Like, I fuck with you. I see you a real one. You saw that. I want you to come. I'm about to do this music shit. You coach cousin. So why not? You know? And I when I and then when I flew back to Atlanta, I stayed with Coach for like two weeks. And then Jeezy was like, shit, fuck that. You about to move with me. So that's how that that's how that happened. Right. Definitely. So when you get out there though, what kind of stuff is your day to day? My day to day? With Jeezy and just every crazy shit, man. Fucking all night parties, not going to sleep, shopping, like cars, bitches, like everything you could think of is like that. What was going on? It was. It was was real. he partying though? Hell yeah. But like what? Just drinking and shit. I mean, everybody was drinking. Yeah, drinking, smoking weed. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like, if they, whatever was going on in the club, he was doing it too. They buying bottles, he buying bottles. Like, right. like I don't, that's why I said I'm not going to take away from what he did in the streets. He he had that, he had money. I seen it in my own eyes. I moved him out of apartments. I moved him out of condos. I moved him out of houses. All the shit before rap. Mm -hmm. He was already staying in a goddamn, like, an $8,000 condo behind Fifth Plaza in, a, in um, Atlanta in Buckhead. Right. This is before rap. So so you can't take I, I can't take that away from him. You know what I'm saying? Everything he did in the streets and he rap about on his song, that shit he that's for real. Right. Like that's all it is. So from your perspective, when did it actually really start blowing up? Like when did it stop feeling like you were kind of struggling and start feeling like, oh shit, we're actually taking off? And what was that like? Um I would have to say I never like the struggle was the struggle was never I never seen the struggle. Mm. All I seen was the progress and every day it was getting better and better and better and better. You gotta understand I've been there since I've been there since Streets is watching. And um 
Come shop with me, double disc. I was selling that in my in my city on 34th and Keystone. That was in 2002. So in 2003, Streets was like 2003, 2004. That's when I probably moved there. And that's when Streets was watching came out. We passed out a half a million CDs at Birthday Bash. Mm -hmm. No lie, half a million CDs. We, and we bagged them all up ourselves, mm -hmm. like everybody. So, and we passed them out and no lie, Later on that night, about two hours later, we we riding everybody and their mamas playing the CD. Right, talking about everybody, it's fucking going crazy. It's crazy that that kind of promotion worked at that time. Mm -hmm. That that you could really kind of force your way into the brains of of people by just giving out hella CDs because some percentage of people are just gonna start listening to it and shit. Yep, and we would, and when you looked at it, you would you would look at it, you you would want to do it. Streets is watching. Mm -hmm. God dang, got like twenty something songs on here. You know? Put this shit in, nigga. Like he hard. They put it in. That shit was undeniable. Right. Hey everybody, we just hit 600k. We're trying to get to 700k. So smack the like button and subscribe. Appreciate y'all.